Hello, welcome to another Creature tutorial. This is a very exciting tutorial because we are going to talk about a brand new Creature addition for the game engine runtimes. And this allows you to essentially run Band Physics Milters live in a game engine. Now this is an Unreal Engine tutorial and Unity support is coming up very shortly. Okay, so let's get started. Now we have the fox character over here. If I play the, the animation, you will see that it's kind of lively because we're using creatures, very powerful native band physics motors and rotate cycle motors and whatnot to animate all the dynamic motion in the scene. In particular, the tail is moving very dynamically using band physics and so, so are the ears as well and part of the back too to simulate the flesh. Okay. However, these band physics motors are not reacting to the environment. What, what do I mean by that? I mean that if you put it into a game engine, it will play as it is, look great. But what if you wanted to move the fox around and actually have it react naturally to the input motion? All right. So in order to do that, we have now a new feature in the creature animation tool, which allows you to actually export these band physics motors. And then in the Unreal Engine plugin itself, it will construct them live and actually simulate them in real time live in the game engine editor itself. Now this is using Unreal Engine's default physics engine, which I believe is the PhysX engine. So there are certain limitations, which I will explain right now before we jump into UE4. Now the first criteria in order for a band physics motor, let's, let me select one of them actually. So this is one of them, bone, th these bones here, these chain of bones here. They are all using band physics, right? Now, the first criteria is that these chain of bones must be at the tip, at the end. They must be a dangling set of bones. They must not have any other children. So you cannot have a band physics motor somewhere in the middle. That won't get exported out, okay? That's the first requirement, and this is due to the default uh, engine restriction in the game engine itself, all right? So that's the first restriction. It has to be a, a dangling chain of bones at the very end, at the tip of the character. And this already makes it very useful for tails and cloth and whatnot. The second requirement is that there shouldn't be any gap between these bones. I so see these bones are, there's no gap between them, right? They, it ends at this point and then it starts immediately and ends again. Now, if you have a gap, it will still work, but the results might vary. Again, this is due to the restriction or the limitation of game engine physics engines which aren't as flexible as Creature's own default physics engine. Now another thing I want to mention is that your results might vary if you have a very very long chain of bones because Creature's own physics engine is very very powerful. It can handle a huge number of uh, number of numbers of bones as you you, you have you, you notice. But when you export it out into another game engine it will be dependent on how stable that solver is. So again I would recommend chains of bones not more than three or four to get good results, okay? So with that, how do you actually get this working? Well, it's very simple. You just go in and export the character, right? As a regular game engine export, and all the information gets automatically exported out. As long as the chain, the chain of bones satisfies the criteria I just mentioned, it will, it will just be exported out, so it just works, okay? So it's completely automatic in this new revision, new update of Creature. Okay, so now I head into Unreal Engine and we'll take a look. Okay, so welcome to Unreal Engine, and if you haven't actually seen the earlier tutorials on how to set up a character in Unreal Engine, I would encourage you to watch those first. All right, so assuming you have set up this character, again, this Fox character, which we just exported from the creature editor, you will have a couple of files. And as you know, you have the default character file, but you also have one more file, which is the metadata file. And what you want to do, let me up to open up the blueprint. What you want to do is to also include that in the character setup. So if you go to creature, you notice there's the animation. There is the animation asset. Oh, sorry, let me open this up again. There is the creature animation asset, which you need to point to the character, in this case, the fox character. And then there's also the creature meta asset, which you should point to the correct metadata, which you just exported out, okay? So it should point to the correct metadata asset, and that will include all the band physics that you 
have previous, previously created for the character. So let me close this and let's open up the metadata and you'll see what, what you see now. So this is the new metadata view and if your chains satisfy the criteria which I mentioned before, you will see them under the band physics chains. And if we open them up, as, as you see, you'll notice that they are already labeled with their correct Molter name. Now, if you don't know what Molter it is, go back to Creature, and I would encourage you to use maybe the Anim Rig Graph, because that's the easiest way to find your physics Molter. So you just move it to one side, click on that, and you can just step through them to see which ones are which, right? So in this case, for example, I know that Molter 8 is the tail, and Molter 23 is of oh, the years, and Molter 13 is another year. Okay, so you get the idea. So you can use the, the Anim Rig Graph to actually determine which Molters are which. So let's go back to Unreal Engine again. And so as you can see, the Molters are all labeled with the name, and below them, crucially, there is an Anim Clip name. The reason is because, as you know, in each animation clip, you have different sets of Molters, correct? So when you actually instantiate the motors in the, in, in the engine itself, in Unreal Engine, you're going to have to specify which clip you want to instantiate it from, because each clip has a different set of motors. Okay, so there you go. So you have the anim clip and the motor name. Those are not changeable. Those are read-only. And then there's active. So if you want to toggle on or toggle off the physics motor live in the game engine, you check this, right? Okay, and then there's finally stiffness and damping. And that was the same thing as what you have in the editor, except of course these are very different values because again, as I want to mention, you are running the physics engine in Unreal Engine or some other engine and those solvers have different sets of parameter scales compared to creature. So you're gonna have to play around with that, but it's not too difficult. You just set a couple of values and see what you know how it looks like. Okay, so let's let's see what we're doing right here. So I have actually enabled, let's actually take a look at what we're doing. So I have actually enabled on purpose a couple of band physics motors from the run cycle. Okay, so I've made a couple of them active and I've tweaked some of their stiffness settings. That's all you really need to do. So let me close this and let's go back to Blueprint and let's see what we're doing in the begin play portion. So the first thing we do is in event begin play, we call the create the new create blueprint band physics function. Okay, and you give it the enemy clip, which I just mentioned, and we're going to instantiate the physics motors from the run clip. That's very simple. And and then we're going to enable input uh, keyboard import, you'll see them keep you see them see in a moment why we're doing that. But let's ignore that for now. Okay, that's all you really need to do just a simple function like this. And so let's close this. Let's play it and see what we get. Okay, oh, you see, you see that? So if I play it again, you see how it's actually wobbling? It's wobbling differently from what it was before in the game editor because we're now using the game engine's default physics, physics engine, physics solver, sorry. Now, to prove that it's live, we can do, we can eject from the scene and now I can take control. And now I can see all these bounding boxes that have been created from the band physics motors. And if I actually move the character around, you notice it's actually wobbling life. Look at that, it's pretty cool, huh? And I can move him left and right, and the physics actually responds naturally to the input motion, right? So again, this is running Unreal Engine's own physics solver. Again, so you have to, you're probably gonna to have to vary the stiffness and damping yourself to tweak to get a, a reasonable set of parameters for good results, but it's not too difficult. You just go in and, and set those values, right? But as you can see, this is actually live. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's really all it is, but I want to mention one more thing. Now, in all 2D games, as you know, you, of, you often flip the character left and right, right, to, to make it move in the left or right direction. When you flip the character, you're going to notice that the physics motors are going to go off sync because they don't respect the orientation of the, the character in the new direction. And so it's going to look really strange. So how do you fix that? Well, it's very simple. That's the reason why in this demo, I have enabled input to this to show you that situation. So now it, keyboard input is actually enabled. When I press the F key, I'm actually going to flip the character by a negative one scale. So I'm going to flip it to the left. Okay. But after I do that, basically I flip the character. I will also again recreate, I'll call this function again, I'll, I'll call create blueprint band physics with the run clip or some other clip, however, whatever clip you want. And this will recreate, it will clear out the current physics motors and recreate new ones 
respecting the new orientation. So that's a very important point. Point. If you're going to flip the character, then just recreate the bend physics after after you have flipped the character, and then you're done. So to prove that it works, let's play it again. All right. And so let's see what happens. See that it works perfectly with flipping. It's pretty cool, right? And of course, I can eject myself, and let's see what happens. So there you go. Again, this is a character that responds naturally to the inputs of your motion, right? So you can actually make them make the physics interactive now, which is really cool. And again, there's colliders attached to all of these these uh, points on, on the motor, so you can use it for your own gameplay code. So, yeah, it's a very very powerful feature, and it basically enables bend physics motors in some form to be live, to be running real time in your game interactively. So I hope you use this feature, I think it's very powerful, and thank you for watching this tutorial.